Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today I'm making a top for my hassock. Some people call it a hassock, some people call it a footstool. But instead of covering mine right now, which I am going to recover it, I normally just take a towel and throw it over the top of it because the dog jumps on it, feet are on it, everything gets on it. So it gets a lot, it gets dirty. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you the fabric that I use. It is strictly fat quarters. After I got the whole thing together, I thought I could make a tutorial on it. The reason that I decided to make it was I'm going to practice using its hearts. And I'm going to put these on that baby blanket to do the quilting. So I wanted to practice first on something, so I thought I'd go ahead and just make this. The back side of my hassock, the top part of it. That's how I got my measurements. Here is, here. Um, you may have wondered if you watch some videos, you think to yourself, how does somebody take this and actually cut it so that it is even with this and it's not like for example you don't cut it so it ends up being like that or off a little bit or it's too much and you can't get it straight well this is where that squaring up comes in handy because when you square it up you take the ruler I'm gonna go up here and you put it across like that and then down here what you're doing is you're matching it up at the bottom down here and you're going along your fabric now I did iron this fabric so you've got a choice to either line it down here if you can see the line right there just put your ruler on it, go to the edge of your fabric, just like that. That's the edge of my fabric. And then you cut that off. I lined up this line right here along my fabric, and then you cut it. And then that makes it. And you do that on every side. And I just flip it upside down here. Get it in the camera for you. Just show you this one here. And you make sure that your, in my case, my seam underneath is laying flat. You don't want that to move on you. I'll get my batting out here. I'll sandwich it together, then pin it, and then I'll get to sewing it. After I get my batting and everything, I'll show you how I do that so you have an idea. So I'm using this warm and white. This batting is left over from another project. As you can see, it does not fit. So I've got it a little bit over. So I'm going to take this leftovers that's down here, hanging off the table, and I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to attach it to this right-hand side to make enough. So I took it and I cut it into two pieces. So what I'm talking about is the nap going the same way. This right here, which I showed in another video. This is your batting and seam tape. And that's what I'm going to attach it to. If you don't have any of this, just take your two pieces, put them together on your sewing machine, and do a zigzag all the way along there. I do, before I had the batting and seam tape, I want to think I did three or four zigzags just to make sure it held. So I would do a couple of them on the longest, I mean the, the longest, the widest, and then go ahead and go a little bit smaller to just to make sure that it's grabs. Now the directions say, cut your piece, and I don't know if you can see it, but this shiny side right here, that's the fusible side. And this is not. Lay your batting wrong side up, which I have it. Put your piece across it. And then you iron it on. That's all there is to it. So I've done the short side, and now I'm going to do the long side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in a section at a time, so I did not cut the full length. Because I want to make sure that I get that close together and attached. There we go. I don't want any overlapping going on. Oops. Got a little wacky there. Let's see, can I take that off? Yes, I can. There we go. There we go. I'll get it into my tape. A little bit more. Measure it here. And I already know that this batting is bigger than my project, which is fine. 
no problem there. It's always supposed to be a little bit a little bit bigger because it's going to pull when you sew it. All right, I have the batting in the middle, as you can see it right on the edge, and then I've put my other fabric on the back. That's the back fabric, and um, I forgot to tell you how I did this. This piece here, which is in the middle, that's a fat quarter. I squared it up. The top, the right, the left, the bottom, that is another fat quarter. I squared it up. Then when I attached, and normally what I'll do is I'll attach the right and the left just out of habit, but I attached the right side of this fat quarter to this, and then the left side, that's when I discovered that I was short. So I was short this amount right here. Okay, once it got attached, and I went and I put the bottom on, here's the bottom. It goes all the way to the other edge. So I took another fat quarter, which you could use scraps, doesn't make any difference. And then I made it the width of this. I put it up. And as you saw in my video where I had some hanging off here, so you know that it was extra. It was longer. And then I attached it. And then I squared it up. So now the next step is going over to the sewing machine. Right, and I think you can see that. I've put the foot on, and what it says is to leave your screw loose so that this can go up and down. You slip this underneath it, and you lay that on there. And there's a little hole. Let's see. There's a little bitty hole there. So you would put your needle down in it. Of course, you know, I don't even have my needle threaded. It's a 12, number 12, I mean not threaded, but don't even have it on there. So let's put the needle on there. Slowly take your hand wheel and go down between that hole, right in the middle if you can, which I did. And now that that foot's on there, and I have it dropped down, you slowly tighten. Am I going the right way? Let's see. Okay, coming to me. Tighten it up. And so what's happened is that foot has adjusted now on the down to be in this high. So let me move my needle up. There we go. My presser foot up. And when it goes down, you can tell. Oh, also I have my feed dog down. You can tell that this can fit underneath there. See that? Okay, so that's how you set the machine up. Well, I just did that entire video and it was on um, fast, I guess you'd call it. Because it was super duper fast. Must be a reason. So I'm going to do it again and hopefully this time it works. Alright, let's see if I can get my thread pulled out of there. Unbelievable. Let's put it up here. And I feel like I need to mark on my fabric so I can. Normally, you would have something to. I'll show you here in a second. So, right here, there's a line right here. And normally, on your fabric, you'd have something to follow with your eye. There's another line over here. In order to keep this lined up, because I don't have this ruler is not stuck on there it's just lightly just sitting there let's see if I can do this not that, move that over a little bit let's see if that'll help and I hope there's not too much glare from that overhead light mark it okay and here we go let's see up pull that out flip it over let's see how we do here I'm thinking to me this is backwards but we shall see oh yeah see I didn't go over my I think I might have to draw on my Oops, my thread broke. Well, here, let me just give you the gist of it. <laughs> Oops, there we go. All right, 
on to slow down my machine. Apparently I'm going too fast and here's the back of it. Let's see if I can show you that. Move it over here a little bit. There we go. It's harder than heck to see now that I turned that darn overhead light on. Or off, I mean, I'll turn that back on. So I went ahead and I changed out my red top thread since it broke. It's broke a couple times on me in skip stitches, so I'm using an actual embroidery thread by Salky instead. Here's what the... I went ahead and I just did another practice. That's the back. And there's the front. If you can see the, the little bit of red. This is, this is the back of the fabric, but this is going to be the front, uh, the red stitches is. I went ahead and went with the six inch heart. Like you know, this is, even though this is my piece, this is my practice piece. Because I'm still trying to learn as I go along here. This is the first time I've used these templates. Let me see if I got my thread. And after I'm done with this angle, I'll turn it and give you another angle. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line it up with this line on that piece of fabric right there and the edge here. It's not quite perfect about it, but hopefully that's good enough. Okay, I'm starting in the middle of that. Let's lock my stitches a couple times here. And let's see if I can. The problem's gonna be that feels a little heavy there. But let's see what we got. I put my speed down a little lower too, so I wouldn't go so fast. Which is a joke because I'm not very fast when it comes to this kind of thing. Let's see here. Too many puckers. Take this, we flip it. And here's where I'm not too good, going back up. I feel like this is backwards, although it's not. All right, and I think that lined up. It looks like it's about right. Let's see if I can keep it right. I started so actually I'm going to freehand and come down without the ruler which should lock my stitches in let's see if that'll work okay needle up let's clip it and there 
there's the heart. And now that I'm a glutton for punishment, <laughs> what I'm doing <laughs> is my heart is over here. <laughs> And instead of putting the left-hand side of the heart next to that, because I don't know where it's going to fall, I don't have a problem if they overlap each other here in the middle. That's okay. I just want to make sure that it doesn't go out into my outer border because I haven't decided yet what I want to do with my outer border. So then I'm going to start on this side and work my way around. Locked in the stitches. All right, let's see if we can do it. Uh-oh, I got off of my side here. Whoops. That got a little crazy, so... Hmm. But, since it's practice, I'm leaving it. I'll show it to you when I'm finished here. I got away from the needle is what I did. I mean, the, I got away from the ruler. I was trying to increase my speed. Yeah, let's see if I can. There we go. There's the tail end of that. around looks like that might be about right there I'm trying to line it up straight here with my fabric you'll soon know whether my fabric's off or not all right let's see I'll go a little faster Uh-oh, my thread is jamming and breaking. I can tie that off. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, yeah, and I don't think it cut the top piece, but I do see it's messed up right here. I'll start it down here. All right, I went ahead and I re-threaded it, and I'm just going to go, instead of locking it in place, I'm just going to sew over the stitches that have already been sewn, and that should do it. Should lock it in. So let me take that off. And let's just go down here. Do some freehand here. And let's see if it will cut it off or not. It's a hit and miss there. It does not. There we go. I hope you can see that heart. Got a little wonky right there, but that's okay. And I have already adjusted my tension, but I think I'm gonna need to adjust it again. I'm not quite sure if it, because it, this here on this side is the same exact tension, so I don't know if I'm just not going fast enough or what the problem is, but like I say, this is the piece that I'm playing with to learn how to do it. All right, here's another angle that I'm going to try. I'm not quite sure which one is the better angle. Let's pull this up here and see if I can get my thread up. There we go. I'm hoping that this will work. I just hit the wrong pedal. Crudola here. <laughs> I have two pedals on the floor for this machine. Let's see if I can bring that back up again. All right. And my left pedal actually cuts my thread. Oh, and that doesn't look like it. No, it did not. Okay, let's put it back down. Let's see if I can do it again. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, it's barely up. All right. 
So as I was saying, whoops, as I knocked the camera there, I have two pedals. I have a small pedal and a large pedal down there. And I have, there we go, anybody got a program to cut it. So of course I put my foot down on it by mistake and cut it before I even got started. All right, here we go. Once again, we're gonna try this. A little faster. My stitch is wider. See, now I didn't change my tension, and it seems to be doing okay. So maybe I just need to increase my speed a little bit. Yeah, we're just going to try it here. Ooh, it needs a bigger stitch. Let's see. thing is getting the other end lined up. I think it's like that. Alright, here we go. Good grip on this here. I don't think it there. Yeah, I guess that's smooth enough. This must be the way I'm holding it here. Just go look down inside there and just go a little bit here. Oops. Go like that. And drop into my <coughs> thing here. Put my foot up. And there we go. We'll do the other side. tweezers. I really like these tweezers because when you squeeze right here that's what opens them and they have a really tight grip. So when I can't get my thread up from the bobbin I just grab a little piece of it and twirl it around there. Let's see if you can see it. Twirl it like that and then it pulls really really easy and you don't have to have your finger down in there. Sometimes I can't get my hand down in there to pull that out. Looks like it's about even. I tried to make it all the way around and I couldn't. Darn. There we go. Let's see if we can swap it. Let's see if it's up there. There we go. Uh oh. I think my stitches. Breaking again? I don't know. I'm never gonna try it. It looked like it was. Yeah. I don't know if my bobbin. Let's see. Was the issue? Or what it is? Hmm. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Oh, it's my thread. That's what it is. Okay. I've got to cut that. Yeah, I don't know if you just saw that big chunk go up in there. there. I'll show it to you. It's like the thread started coming apart. Look at that. It got bunched up. Might should re-thread itself. 
Now I'm going to have to go back to at least right here where I saw it and take that out. Right, here we go. And we're back at the beginning. Okay, let's take that off. Flip this here. That's where I went over it. is it. So now I'm going to, I think I'm going to put maybe one more heart in the middle here where there's a space. And what I did was I put these two hearts coming towards me, these two hearts going that direction, and I'm trying to think which kind of heart to put in there and if I should, um, I can figure it out I could put one heart going this way and one going that way or I could put them both with their heads up this direction I'll think about it and come back all right I've completely finished quilting it and after the hearts I did the edges with decorative stitches from my sewing machine that's what I did on this side Then on the top part, I did the stippling. And then down the sides, I did that there. Back it up a little bit so you can see it. And I actually did one, let's put it right here, did this archway here and then I echo the two around it. I also did it here on the other side. Same type of thing there. You barely see it, but I did do it. So there's three on each side. And it came out real good. And then I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to show you this middle here. So the big, let's go up here at the top. It's easier. All right, so there's the big heart right here. And then the one right next to it, there's a big heart. And then when I went into the center, what I did was I did four of them. So this heart, let me pack it up. As you can see it right here. And then this one. And then this one here. And then the, the other one. So there's four of them. One, let me see if I can get my finger in there so you can see it. One two, three, and four. So they're opposite each other with the points going inward. And then let me show you the back. Put that over here so you can see it. But you really can't see too much because on one hand I made it all in that light color of blue thread that matches the back. I did discover what was going on when I flipped it over and I could see a little bit of the red coming through. Let's see, like right there. After I'm totally finished, and I'm trying to think what I was doing, I was doing something, one of the stitches on the sewing machine, and I realized that the weight of my in, um, bobbin thread was incorrect, and that's why it was coming through. Although I had fixed my tension and everything, it didn't take care of it totally. So let me see if I can back up a little bit, hold on so I can get the whole thing in the picture. All right, there we go. I'm standing on a chair. So I can get it all in the picture. Now remember, this is nothing other than the top that's going on my hassock. And that um, middle fabric, one fat quarter, 18 by 24, I do believe is the fat quarter, and I squared it up. Give me an idea how big it is. Well, I hope you like this tutorial. Now that I've done a lot of practicing, I'm going to start working on that baby quilt because that baby uh, bird's quilt has got to go next week, so it has to be completed by tomorrow. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And you do note that I did not put a binding on it. All I did was sewed a straight stitch all the way around the entire thing 
and then I cut it with my pinking shears. This way, if you guys have hassocks at home and you want to do the same thing, then by all means, it won't be that hard. And all those decorative stitches just came off my sewing machine. I didn't do anything by hand, all by machine. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got a comment you want to make or you want to see more of um, quilting or doing the stitching or anything, just let me know so that I can um, do more video. I don't know if my videos are too long, if you guys want them shorter or I'm putting too much in them or because I don't have enough uh, feedback, so I'm not quite sure if it's too much. So let me know. Take care until next time. Bye-bye.